playing the majority of their games on the road already early into their season, girls hockey would finally be kicking off their next four games at Babson with a great rival matchup, facing the Natick Red Hawks here on Saturday night. The opening period goes by quickly as it's the Red Hawks who jump out first with the lead. As Lauren Jackson's shot from the slot deflects off a few players, it goes right to Molly Burns on his top shelf for the putback. Looked like goalie Alyssa Semino's view was blocked by players out in front of the net. But either way, it's Red Hawks who hold a 1-0 advantage heading into the second period. But if you've seen any Raiders hockey, you know that 1. They barely ever face a deficit. And 2. On the rare chance that they are losing in a game, well, it's not going to last long. So we go to the second period and Raiders come out more aggressive attacking the net. Looking for that equalizer, Kylie Noonan recovers the puck along the boards, racing through the neutral zone, fakes out Sophie Burr, and buries the wrister, top shelf, for the clutch score. And we are all tied up 1-1, thanks to number 27. So with just about four minutes left to go in this second, 1-1 is still the score until Carly Boyle feeds the puck outside to Katie Hawkinson. And Kylie Noonan grabs a rebound just sitting on the doorstep, and you guessed it, buries the go-ahead score. Wellesley nets two unanswered in this period alone, both goals by Kylie Noonan. After that second goal of the game, though, Natick would have their chances to tie it up here again, getting three power play opportunities. But going up against a team like Wellesley, who owns the penalty kill, the Red Hawks come away with nothing all three times. Alyssa Semino, after allowing a goal way back in the opening period, would not let the puck find net again. This game would be a physical one from the start, as it always seems to be between these two rivals. In the closing seconds, a fight for the puck in the crease results in Molly Burns trying to make a soft push-off by Carly Boyle look like a shove that would knock Chara off his own skates. You gotta love hockey. This game would come to an end quickly after that, but it's going to be a great match for sure when these two teams meet yet again at Natick in a few weeks. Raiders were down early but would fight back as a team, and Kylie Noonan's two key goals would be the game changer here. Wellesley earns a gritty 2-1 victory over Natick as they improve to 6-1. And staying with hockey at 6-2-1, and one, the boys would once again be playing on a Monday afternoon, the third Monday in a row. After taking a loss and a tough draw in those last two matches, though, the Raiders would look to change that by dominating this game early, facing off against the Milton Wildcats. And they would do exactly that as this power play opportunity kickstarts Wellesley's offense here in the opening period. Cotter Huff centers it to Nathan Brown, and Brown's try is stopped, but Nathan feeds the rebound to Owen O'Connor. O'Connor just buries it for a Raiders 1-0 advantage on a key power play score. Wellesley is relentless in the crease as goalie John Driscoll from Milton makes some tough initial saves and continues to lead the rebound just sitting on the doorstep. And so David Rourke nets in this putback here, and it's a Raiders score just a minute later. Great opening first period here for Wellesley. 2.30 left to go in this scoreless first. Raiders offense changed that with back-to-back -back goals. Wellesley heads into the second, leading 2 to nothing. That Wellesley advantage would get even bigger as TJ Maley dumps the puck out to Zach Doughty. And Doughty's wrister from the slot flies high and somehow through traffic. And now it's a three-goal deficit for the Wildcats as Milton tries to find any offensive rhythm. But goalie Andrew Johnston is having none of it for Raiders. Making some key stops here late in this game. And as Milton continues to be shut out on the ice here, Raiders put the finishing touches to this game. As David Rourke, on a two-on-one, scores his second goal on the night. As Rourke buries a Patrick Morton centering pass to the back of the net. And Wellesley has a commanding 4-0 lead. And so Andrew Johnston and the rest of the Raider defense would handcuff the Wildcats. Wellesley just played a solid game for all three periods. There always seems to be someone different stepping up and scoring for this team. And on this night, it would be two goals by David Rourke, a score apiece by Owen O'Connor and Zach Doughty. Wellesley easily secures their seventh victory of the season as they will face their next three opponents on the road. But for now, this game goes down as a final 4-0 shutout victory over Milton. Girls basketball at 10-0, dominating their opponents in every win to come in here on Tuesday night, having already earned a tourney berth. The Raiders, though, could easily look ahead to their next two games, with the defending state champs, Braintree, coming in on Friday 
and Sunday kicking off the Good Sport Invitational at the Garden. And the struggling Dedham Marauders would certainly hope that would be the case as they would look to catch Wellesley on an off night. But it's no mistake that these Raiders are undefeated. So we tip off here at Wellesley High School for the first quarter. Raiders jump out with the lead, being aggressive to the basket as Emily Cronin, Emma Ivey, and Dorian Cohen drive to the basket, creating opportunities, and all three, behind great plays, score easily in the paint. Those six quick points would help spark a 9-0 Wellesley run as Caroline Sullivan nails a tray coming off the bench. Raiders defense would hold Dedham without a point until almost five minutes had passed in this first quarter. Those points would come off a steal as Abri Vasquez would go coast to coast on this fast break getting the shot to fall and won. Wellesley would close out this solid opening quarter with a three by Leo Sperling and a great move to the basket by Nicole Beckett that goes for two more. And Wellesley comes away with a 14-5 lead after one. Start of the second though, Marauders take advantage of a few turnovers here by the Raiders. Back-to-back -back steals by co-captain Christina Mitchell that creates four quick denim points. But a key fast break here by Kelsey Zarl is a beauty. And what a finish by Zarl to help maintain this Wellesley lead. And this would be a very defensive second quarter as Leo Sperling with the theft during Cohen the recovery. Cohen just fantastic on the dribble. She's hacked and fouled. But Dorian lays it up for two more. It's Raiders 19, Marauders 12. So as we head deeper into the third, Wellesley has a 22-15 lead until Katie Williamson is key on the perimeter, driving around Hannah Ryan, banking it in for two. A couple possessions later on another Dorian Cohen fast break chance, Williamson backs up Cohen, grabs the rebound off the glass and sinks the putback and won. That's now a 27-15 Raider lead. Williamson also makes the free throw as well. And five quick points by the captain gives Wellesley their largest lead of the night so far. Marauders would cut the deficit to nine after Nina Heelman, open at the top of the key, drains it from downtown to make it 29-20 Raiders. Caroline Sullivan posts up for the shot and sinks the jumper, 33-22 Wellesley, as we've got one more quarter to go, where the Raiders stay unbeaten. But Wellesley quickly answers that themselves here in the fourth, with key scores by Leo Sperling and Caroline Sullivan. Sullivan now providing key points off the bench. It's definitely clutch for Raiders tonight scoring 11 solid points, most of them coming in the second half. Raiders defense holds Denham to only four points in this important final quarter. So once again, the offense knocks down the shots they need, team defense handles the rest. Raiders go to 11-0, beating Denham 42-26. Another game, another win. So Wednesday, we are right back at Babson and Girls Hockey as this Raider team will be going for their sixth victory in a row. Raiders always come at you with a solid and consistent offensive attack. That starts with the first line. Loaded up with captains and reliable scorers ready to spark this young team every game. And tonight would be no different. As kick starting the offense would be the Raiders leading scorer, Kylie Noonan. Big night again for Noonan as we check in to the opening period. Carly Boyle crashes the boards, getting the puck and dumping it out to Kylie Noonan. Noonan's wrister handcuffs Isabel Gentile for the first score of the game. 1-0 Wellesley early in the first. That one goal lead would remain that way until we head into the second. As Wellesley would go on the power play after Noonan gets stripped up hard by Margaret McIsaac. It's just seconds pass in this man up advantage and Sophie Vernon backhands the puck along the boards perfectly to Kylie Noonan. Noonan digs and leaves Christina Maloof behind and snipes it top shelf for the power play goal. Just a great assist there by Sophie Vernon and even better results. This is now 2 0 Raiders. Just past the nine minute mark in this second, though, Marauders answer when Cassandra Grant centers it to Melissa Salata. And Salata's one timer slips in around Caroline Bedrosian. Dedham's deficit is suddenly cut in half, now down 2 1. But Kylie Noonan changes that as her try is blocked, but Noonan sticks the puck loose under Gentile's pads. Sophie Vernon and Carly Boyle fight for the putback, and Sophie Vernon punches it through as Noonan, Boyle, and Vernon take advantage of the fact that Dedham's goalie lost sight of the puck. It's now a two-goal Wellesley lead yet again. This back-and-forth period would continue that way after Melissa Salata sinks in her second goal of the game to make it a Dedham 3-2 deficit. That one-goal Wellesley edge would only last about 30 seconds, though, as Carly Boyle sticks the puck away, creating a two-on-one advantage. Boyle's centering pass is just perfect to Kylie Noonan, and Noonan buries the Hattie. 
great pass by Carly Boyle and another great score by Noonan as the Raiders continue to be aggressive offensively. And it continues to pay off here tonight as well as Noonan nets her second hat trick of the season. So the third and final period comes our way and as Dedham attempts to clear out the puck, Carly Boyle cuts in front and takes it away, bringing it back in the Raiders' offensive end. With nobody defending her, Carly Boyle takes the shot and rips the wrister stick side and sinks in the unassisted score. 5-2 Wellesley as Boyle helps put this game away in the final period as Dedham cannot come back, now down by three. Raiders offense looked great and set the tone early. The defense stepped up after allowing two earlier goals. Caroline Bedrosian again would be solid between the pipes. Wellesley earns their sixth win in a row and go to 7-1. and one. At the final here, Raiders 5, Marauders 2. Well, that's it for sports in this episode, but stay with Wellesley Media as we bring you the coverage you need to catch up on all Raiders sports. Watch all Wellesley Raider games and highlights on demand at wellesleymedia.org. Our YouTube and Facebook pages at Wellesley Public Media right here, Comcast 9 and Verizon 39.